G'day all, welcome to another C++ tutorial. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about adding more files to your project. Uh, C++ programs can become extremely large, sometimes consisting of tens of thousands of lines of code. Uh, I've actually heard that the Windows source code, the source code to the Windows operating system, is millions of lines of code. I don't know how true it is, but um, that's what I've heard. Anyway, it's a really common practice when you're just starting to program to put everything in one file, and this is pretty good for a little while, but it quickly becomes out of hand. Uh, it's very difficult to find certain functions or certain variables that you've declared and maybe you want to change. Yeah, it just becomes hard to navigate. So we're far better off putting things or, you know, keeping certain things together in different files. And this helps us keep track of things really, really well. And what we basically want to do is create files and then use the Solution Explorer of Visual Studio as a virtual bookshelf so that each file that we add to our program is like a little book that contains certain sort of information. And um, we can just double click on the Solution Explorer to open up one of those files and then we can close it down when we're finished editing it. And it just makes things really, really simple. So on top of files, you've also got directories or folders. Uh, if you've looked at your Solution Explorer when you first make a um, project, you might notice that it makes three little directories for you. Uh, it makes header files, resource files, and source files directories. So they're all empty directories, but um, yeah, you can add your own or you know play around with those, do whatever you want. But um, the Solution Explorer will automatically add certain files to certain directories for you. Yeah, it just makes things easier again. So on top of separating things into files, you can also separate them into directories. And there's actually an infinite number of different files that you could add to a project. I mean, there's sound files like your WAV or your MP3. You've got graphics files, maybe they're PNG or JPEGs. There's 3D models. Maybe you've made some models in, um, you know, 3D Max or uh, what's that other one? Blender. Uh, but there's two very important files that we're going to be looking at today, and they're called um, C++ source code files and C++ header files. So we've actually seen these before as well. They're, they're not new. But uh, the difference is subtle, actually. They both actually contain C++ source code, but the source code files uh, end with a CPP extension, and they usually hold uh, the source code. The definitions of functions and the classes, uh, we'll get to classes later, but executable things, they actually contain the body of the functions, uh, whereas the C++ header files, or header for short, uh, they always end with a .h extension, and they hold the declarations of functions and classes, so they don't actually hold the functions and classes, just the declarations. Uh, it's just a convention too. Yeah, this is just what's normally done. Uh, you're actually free to put declarations in your C++ code, uh, source code files, and you're free to put the body of um, functions and classes in your header files. It's up to you. So they're not usually used uh, to hold functions or, or classes themselves, these headers, but uh, they can. All right, when you make your own headers, um, they'll be placed in the uh, headers directory in the... Solution Explorer, uh, but Visual Studio has got set up already. I think if I remember at the end when we're doing the example, I'll show you where this is. Uh, it's got a bunch of directories that it normally looks for headers, and if you say um, you know the pound symbol or the crosshatch include and then IO stream, but you use these triangle brackets, uh, that means that Visual Studio is going to look for IO stream, the uh, the header. It's going to look in one of those default include directories. Just as standard headers are all kept in the same sort of place, and that's what the triangle brackets mean. Now, it's a bit different. When we write our own headers, um, they're not in those standard directories. They're actually in our project directory. And to include one of our own headers, uh, we've got to put these double quotes around it. Yeah, so when you actually put the double quotes in C++, they won't be the, you know, the 66 and 99 like these ones look. Uh, they'll just be the same symbol either side, but they're double quotes right there. Okay, yes, before we get on to an example, so we, we mentioned in the past, I think, that uh, include and then a header name, a header file name, is actually just going to grab the file and uh, dump all of the code into your 
a source code file as if you'd written it yourself. And I just want to point out, this is a really bad programming practice, but I just want to point out that it's extremely literal about the way that it does this, uh, to the extent that we can actually say something like uh, int i equals, and then include value of pi dot h. So I should actually have put that in uh, double quotes, since this will be a, a header that I write myself. But um, int i equals, and then include value of pi dot h is a pretty ridiculous thing to write. And the include directive actually has to be on its own line. But, um, oh yeah, also Visual Studio is going to underline it in red. Yeah, it thinks it's an error, but it's not. It's going to compile OK. And then in the actual value of pi.h file, you could just have 3.14 written there by itself up in the corner with nothing else. So it's a ridiculous way to program, but it works. So this is, you know, not recommended at all, but it's good to know that the include directive does exactly as it says on the box. It grabs the um, code from another file, or the text from another file, and dumps it straight in your file. Okay. Well, that's enough of that. What I wanted to do was a little example. So if we come over to Visual Studio, I've just set up a new project here. And uh, what we want to do is start adding files. So the first one that we add is probably going to be our main method. Add a new item. I click CPP file and type main .cpp. Not our main method, sorry, our main uh, you know file. And I click add and I zoom in a bit. So what we're going to do is make a um, a program that calculates the number of the number of liters in a swimming pool that you want to build. This is going to be cool. All right, we're going to need IO stream. Okay, let's say we need some uh, some doubles here. We're going to need depth, um, width, and the length of our pool. And let's read that from the user. So C out. Um, your poopal. <laughs> How deep do you want your poopal? And then we'll read in depth. And how wide. And see in width. Yeah, I was wondering why that was underlined. See out. Uh, okay, how long. Okay, so we've just read three values from the user, but now we're going to do a, a little calculation right here, and um, that's going to tell us how long, or sorry, how many liters there are in the pool. So we'll see out um, your pool. Whoa, what am I doing? I've gone crazy. <laughs> Depth, uh, width. Okay, that's good. I'll put a breakpoint right there. Okay, so we're going to put this calculate volume uh, function into its own uh, header. So let's do that, shall we? If we right click over here on uh, the solution's name, and we come down to add, we go to new item, and this time we select the header file, dot h, and down the bottom we type the name. So I might say this is um, volume. I'll call it volume, and Visual Studio is going to add the .h there, unless you put you know, an extension yourself, it's going to add .h. And what we want to do right here is declare this function. So it's called calculate volume, I'll just copy that. Oops, depth, double width. Okay, so inside my header I've got nothing but the uh, declaration. That's not actually the function body. 
uh, it's the declaration and we can tell that because it ends with a semicolon um, what I'm actually also going to do is add a, uh, a guard but we'll go into this later oops oops oh just copy hey so I'm having a lot of trouble typing and if Okay, so that's a guard. It's underlined that, I think, because it doesn't know where the um, where the body of that function is. Let's have a look at it saying. Error, PCH warning. Header stop cannot be in a macro, or if block, an IntelliSense PH file was not generated. <laughs> that's cool. Okay, I don't know what that means. Let's just add the um, the body of this function. So we'll do that by adding another C++ source file. But this one we're going to name, and this is just a convention. Um, we're going to name this volume.cpp. So it's the it's the other part to this volume.h file. We'll give it exactly the same name, uh, except the extension. So we come over here, right click on your solution uh, name, then go to add a new item, and check um, C++ file again. And down the bottom here, we want to type volume, and hit enter. So now we've got another C++ source file, if I just save that one. Um, we've got another C++ source file, this one's called volume.cpp, and what we want to put in here is the actual body, the uh, definition of this function. So the header's got the declaration, and if I copy that, the declaration, we can start writing the body to it. So this is going to be a pretty simple function, really. All we want to do is return uh, depth by width, by length, by 1000. We don't need the brackets actually. Um, there we go. Okay, so the other thing that we want to do is uh, include that header in this file just here. Um, oh yeah, you'll notice IntelliSense comes up with it too, since as soon as you type the uh, double quote, IntelliSense is going to come up and tell you which headers you've written. So volume.h, thank you IntelliSense, I was very kind of you. And we'll save that. And we'll put a semicolon there of course. Okay, so that's the uh, body of the function. And this is the declaration of the function. If we come back to our main method, uh, we'll see that that's still underlined. And that's because we included uh, volume.h in our volume.cpp file, but we never included it in our main file, so we'd better do that. Volume.h. There we go, good as gold. Your poo will hold. <laughs> Your poo will hold. <laughs> Uh, like it's a verb to dig a hole or something. Your poo will hole. Okay, uh, I think it's all good. Let's just hit play and see how we go. Okay, how deep do you want your pool? We're going to make an Olympic size swimming pool here. So it's 2 meters. And how wide? They're 25 meters wide and they're 50 meters long. Look at that. Your pool will hold 2.5 by E to the... Oh my gosh. Let's get rid of the scientific notation, shall we? Um, C out precision, give us about 10 places brass. Oh yeah, we go again. So 2, uh, how wide? 25, and how long? 50. Okay, there we go. 2.5 million litres. Very, very good. So that's an Olympic sized swimming pool. Now I don't know about you, but when I get swimming, I really get swimming. I want a, I want a huge pool. i tell you what I'm going to make. Um, how deep do you want your pool? I reckon it's going to have to be at least 7 metres. Um, I'll say this is probably about 40. 40 metres wide. And 100 metres long. Oh, that's, that's, see, that's the kind of pool I'm talking about. Um, 28 million litres. That's a lot of water. Anyway, if we just hit stop. Okay, so that's just a basic introduction to how to add a uh, another header, your own uh, header, and another CPP file. And just this convention right here, this um, including this uh, header in both the volume.cpp and the main.cpp, 
is worth watching out for. And the other thing is these guards here. We'll go into what the guard is later. And in this particular program, it doesn't actually matter. We could get rid of that. And it'll run fine. Yeah, it's all good. But uh, later on, you'll want to put those guards in, so we might as well get into the habit of it. Anyway, split your uh, programs up when they start to get too big. Yeah. Good stuff. Thank you for listening.